morning. Um, I'm just going to talk to you for a minute about rehydrating your starter. I went ahead and re I'm starting to rehydrate a packet myself to see exactly how much it's going to take, um, liquid and flour. So I'm going to, this is what, oh, you probably can't see it very well. This is what I normally feed my starter with, which is the, the bread flour. Um, from King Arthur. It's non-brominated, non-bleached. So you want to make sure you have a non-brominated, non-bleached. So the dehydrated flakes that I sent you, what you're going to do is that is a tablespoon of flakes. Um, you're going to put it into a jar. I would suggest, you know, something probably like, I don't know, at least 16 ounce jar. Um, you could use a bowl. This is what I do my regular you know, like big bakes in. So this is a lot of starter that I'm feeding up for today because I'm going to make some stuff for our family. Um, basically, so we're going to start with, with this. What I did was I put the tablespoon of, and I'm going to clean this jar up when I'm done. You want to make sure you clean your jar up when, when you're done. Just kind of like use a, a spatula is what I like to use mainly. Um, it's really good with wiping the sides down. You just don't want a lot of yucky dried stuff up there because it gets it's just yucky um <laughs> but anyways anyway so what i did was i put this the flakes down in the bottom of my glass and then i added two tablespoons of water because what i'm going to do is is i'm rehydrating it so i walked away from it i just let the flakes sit in the two tablespoons of water for about 30 minutes and then i used my spatula to kind of mix it up and break it up and and get it to to kind of smooth out it's going to be a little watery after that, I added one tablespoon of the flour. So now I wanted to show you the consistency. It's going to look like, it's kind of hard for me to show you this because it's kind of a deep cut, but it's going to look like a thick pancake is what it's going to do. And so it's, it's rehydrated quite well. So what I'm going to do after that is I will take my spatula out my spatula, my spatula, and then I use a coffee filter. Coffee filters with all my ferments. I love coffee filters. Now I'm going to scrape this down better. So right now I'm going to just lay that down to the side right now. I wanted to show you. Coffee filters and rubber bands are my best friends. Um, once I started doing a lot of the fermenting and um, just basic fermenting for all kinds of stuff, coffee filters and rubber bands. Coffee filter means that I can't get a little gnat or something in there. I mean, we live in Florida. Gnats are, because a lot of people use cheesecloth and things can get through the cheesecloth. So the coffee filter, it can breathe and the rubber band attaches to it really well. Now once we get this, because this is our first feeding. We're going to call that our first feeding. Um, after this feeding, what's going to happen, and I need to scrape it down so you can see it better, because it's not very much in there, okay? So, but once we get feeding more, I always use another rubber band so that I can mark where I'm going with that. Because once it, you know, that way you can see how much it's growing. Here, we're just going to look at it and go, hmm, in about probably five hours, it'll be double the size that's in there now, but you can't really see very much because it's, it's a big glass. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for that to double in size, and then we're going to use our scale um, to measure that, or not measure that, but to weigh it. So your next feeding, what you're going to do is you're going to have another clean jar, or you can put it back in this jar, but we need to know how much this starter weighs, and then we're going to weigh out equal parts of starter, water, and flour. And then that's going to keep your, your, your starter healthy. Um, we should be able to bake with this in a couple days, um, once we build it up enough. Because you're going to need three-fourths cup of starter for, um, for a loaf. At least that's what I use. Now you can use less. So, um, but I would suggest starting with three fourths cup until you get used to things, because I can definitely do it with a lot less starter. But it takes a lot longer for it to rise and stuff. So um, this is the beginning. So this is my first feeding of the dehydrated starter, and you can see there's not very much of it in there. And again, I'm about to scrape my spatula off and um, wipe the, the sides down really good, so that it looks a lot better and and 
I can see more of what I've got there. All right. Well, good luck, guys. I'm excited about teaching you how to do this. And this is just the beginning. And again, it's like having a pet. You're going to have to feed it and care for it. And when you're not using it, I what I do is I keep mine in the refrigerator when I'm not using it. And like I said, I use, this is what I'm working with today. I'm going to be making some some different things for the family today. And so this is all of my starter that I'm working with now. Um, but if you're not baking a whole ton, all you need is just a little jar to keep maintained. If you're going to make a loaf every once in a while. And really, I can keep my starter, as long as it's fed, I'll feed it. And I'll, I can go like a week or two without baking. Um, and it can just stay in the refrigerator. But you want to make sure that you have a regular lid so it doesn't dry out. Um, and so, but anyways, that's what we got going on there. So, Goody needs to breathe. And we gave it some flour to eat and some water to drink. And um, our next feeding is going to be equal weight of flour, water, and starter. Okay? All right. Good luck, guys. I'm here for any questions. Bye.